This is Darrell and Lida Bensinger today. Uh, we, DNL Bensinger, Lida's running the camera today, and we're going to talk about some product that we handle. We uh, have been selling parts for Jeeps for some years now. Uh, we get parts sourced from pretty much anywhere in the country, actually, anywhere in the world. And uh, two of our biggest suppliers are uh, Joe's Motor Pool out of the UK and MD1 out of the Philippines. Now today we're going to talk about some of the MD1 products. We have just uh, recently got in a complete shipping container of product. Uh, this is actually going to be our 64th full-size shipping container of parts. We have been handling MD1 parts for uh, over 25 years. Uh, so we, we handle a lot of their sheet metal, we handle a lot of their bodies. We are a direct importer of their, of their product. Um, we don't go through any middlemen. We sell retail. We also sell to a lot of other dealers. But uh, we'll go over some of the items that, we, that we're handling, some of the new stuff. So starting out today, uh, one of our new products, we're not going to have all this stuff opened up for you to see because we're, most of this stuff, believe it or not, because it's so late this year, is uh, already destined and already sold, ready to be shipped out. This is a MBT trailer, complete, axle, whole works. Uh, partly disassembled, the axle's taken off of it, but World War II MD style trailer in the box, completely, completely, complete. Here we have combat wheels with combat, with tires. One of the items that we've been doing lately, we started to add the tires to them. Uh, you can buy them that way, or over here, we also have you know, combat wheels, you know, by themselves, like most people buy them without tires. The civilian wheels, CJ2A style civilian wheel we handle. Also, and then we get into some of our uh, some of our body kits. Uh, on the top here we have a, a CJ3B. On the bottom we have an MB2A. The MB2A is a product that we designed for years. Customers kept saying, I, I found a CJ2A, I can't find an MB, can't find GPW, or they cost too much. I find CJ2As everywhere and they're reasonable. Can I make it look like a World War II Jeep so I can just at least have fun? So we designed that body and we handle that where it has all the features of an MB as far as the visual goes. And the tr tr front floor is made to accept the T90 transmission. So you have to make a few little mop cages to your frame and you can use the, use the CJ2A or 3A frame and make it look like an MB for you to have as much fun with it if you want. Then we start into some of our uh, World War II kits. These are MVs, GPWs that we uh, that we handle. You see how the crates come. Uh, the generally the military models are painted rust oxide, and the civilian models are painted uh, primer black. We come up next to trailers that are just body trailers. This T3C civilian trailer, and that body tub with its tailgate. We've got the M100 trailer, the MBT trailer also. So if you're just going to replace the trailer body, you can do that. We also sell individually the floors and the end panels and, and those kind of things, and even the frame. Uh, as if you don't want to buy the entire, entire assembled one like we showed you at the beginning, you can patch up one you've already got. Next we have the CJ8 Scrambler. We import the body for that. We have a fair number of sales on that. That's becoming a popular model again now. It was more popular now than it was when it was new. And also the CJ2A. We end the CJ2A body tubs also. And then here stacked on the side are frames or chassis, depending on what you're, how you want to uh, call them. We handle uh, the MB, the GPW, the CJ2A, and uh, this one standing up here in front is actually a TJ. So that's a little bit new for us there, but we, uh, we handle all the different frames for the, for the old model Jeeps. Here we have a CJ5 that is going to get shipped out for a customer. And this here is what we call a master kit. We handle a master kit, which can be bought at any of our different 
body uh, packages, MB, GPW, or whichever. And the master kit simply has quite a bit more parts involved in it than the normal kit. It's got seat frames, it's got, you know, gas tanks. I mean, you can even get that, you can get that with or without a frame. We can include the frame with that. So there's, there's a considerable amount of options to go with the, with the master kit. You can get almost all the metal parts and accessories in one box if you wish to. What we have here, if you buy a, buy a body from DNL Bensinger, this is how the body's going to come. You'll see how it's packaged. The size of the carton is the size of the body tub. The windshield, hood, grill are set down inside. The fenders sit here in the back. We include the top bows in our kits. We also include an accessory pack of parts that go with it. Even though other dealers import bodies from the Philippines, from MD1, each of us dealers get to decide exactly what product we want to put in, in our kits. We decided to include the top bows many years ago. Uh, top bows, today's world of top bow costs you around $160 or so. And if we had to ship this to you, depending where you're at in the country, it's going to cost you another $50 or $60. You're going to have a $200 value in getting this top bow along with the kit. And you don't have to worry about trying to pick it up later. A lot of these accessories come with, and we're going to open those up and show you what all comes with the accessories. Okay, now we've taken some of the accessory kits out that come with the DNL vents in your body. As we discussed, the large parts, hood, fender, windshield frame, grill. But then we go into the small parts that, that we include with our kit the, the latches for the windshield to the dash the T rubber for the windshield and the cow rubber. We have the brackets that go on the front gussets down to the frame. You got your transmission boot covers. You got your wood blocks for the hood. We do not have the canvas on them, but the wood blocks. You got your pack of flipping loops. You got your topo brackets, topo front storage brackets, topo castings. Also the four body handles. You got the shovel point bracket and the ax Point, the axe uh, handle and the axe clamp. Finally, we've got the, uh, the doorway safety strap anchor and doorway safety strap bolt. The body tub we've gotten out now, this is just the ID tub for the MB. And you'll see it comes with the uh, couple of footman loops, shovel and axe slots, windshield pivot. We've got the floor panels. In here, the bolt in transmission panel in the floor. You have the glove box door and the toolbox lid. This particular body is a GPW. You can tell it's got the GPW style uh, seat supports. It has the GPW square type latch, the GPW lid with the grooves on it. Also, include the bracket for the hand crank on the bodies. So you've got the hand crank bracket where the hand crank is back here, and also your, your rest for the rear seat are of the Ford style. If you had an MB, they would all be MB style parts. So, you know, depending which one you're looking for, we can accommodate you on either model. That's most of what's included on, on a tub. Now, as I said, this is our 64th container. We have been importing these bodies for 25 years, and we, have, and we do install them. We probably put more of these on than any other dealer, I would guess, and they, uh, they make a real nice Jeep if you get something completely rusted out. All right, we've, we've mounted a lot of these bodies, so we know, we know what it takes to put them on. There's always a little bit of finesse work to do, a little bit of touching up, a little bit of grinding, a little bit of following. They do a nice job if you take your time. Look at what you're doing, and uh, there's always a little bit, a little bit to it. It ain't gonna just drop together with a, a six pack and a pizza during during the baseball game. So, you know, you gotta take your time and do a nice job. So, recently, there have been some bodies now being imported from India, and uh, one of the one of the big push points that they're talking about on the Indian bodies is that they have all the holes drilled in the side. Well, as I said, we've been doing this for 25 years, and I would say BTDT, been there, done that. 
We do not put the holes in the body for a specific reason. There's probably, uh, in the last 75 years, probably been 10, 12 different manufacturers with all these kind of components like body handles and everything else we see here. You don't know who made the body handle, or if you're going to buy the body handle from any, any one of the number of manufacturers. And when you go to bolt this body handle on, if that bolt hole is half a bolt off, you get two bolts in and these two don't fit, what are you going to do? You're going to weld this hole up, you're going to slot it all out, put a flat wash on it, make it look ugly. There's the, there's the work you have. We have decided that the easiest way to go is for you to take whatever part you're using, whether you bought it from us, whether you bought it from somebody else, take the part you were using, locate where the part goes, use the actual part as your, as your guide to drill your holes. Drilling these holes once where you want them is a lot less work than having to move any of them if they're not in the right place. We, uh, we learned that by experience and that's why we don't put the holes in the body. I've had customers say, well, why don't you make a big paper pattern and stick it on the side and drill them all at once? Same thing. We don't know where you're going to get the parts that you're going to bolt on there. And when you're talking about this MB, there's a bit of work to do here. I mean, you start out with six bolts for a mirror. You got three, you got six bolts for a fire extinguisher. You've got seven bolts for the doorway, half door. You've got four for the crash pad that goes on the inside here. You've got four for this body handle. We do have a couple of the footman loops done for you. Some of those are already drilled. You're going to have two up here for the, for the top bow front storage bracket. You're going to have three back here for the rear top bow bracket. You're going to have two here for the body handle that comes around the corner. And you're going to have two down here for the reflector. Like I said, if you take your time and look at what you're doing, you can do a real nice job with this. But use Use the actual part that you're going to assemble in this body as your marker, as your guide, as to where to drill the holes. You'll find it comes out much easier. It does take a little work to drill the holes, but much less than having to move a hole, weld it shut, do something when the hole is not, you know, where you want it to be. That's why we don't put holes in the body. So, when we're talking about drilling holes in the body, most of the large holes, like you see here, the firewall holes, most of those are done. Most of the holes you're going to have to drill are... 3 8 5 16 you know, quarter inch. Small stuff that you can easily handle. You'll see all the dash holes already drilled, the floor holes for the brakes, all them big difficult holes are drilled. There's the biggest hole that you'll have to drill is going to be right here for the gas tank line that goes through the floor. And that's going to be about an inch and a half hole. Uh, other than that, you know, a lot of your Captured nuts are already in here when you got stuff like this where there's a captured nut for the rear rear floor and for the dirt guard. The holes are there and the captured nuts are already there for those type of things. But as I said, most of the holes for the for mounting things on the outside of the body, those you're gonna have to draw yourself. There's our review on the uh, on the MD1 World War II body. If you're interested in those kind of bodies or body kits, give us a call, dnlbensier.com. Call us up, give us an email, and as always, safety is your responsibility.